Awesome. Good morning, everyone. Yes, here we are. Lockdown day. I don't know which day it is. <laughs> but we are live and it is so good to see everyone. I can see you when you're watching. I can see you when you comment. So it would be really awesome if you log on, uh, give us a comment, tell me where you're watching from. Uh, tell me if you have coffee or tea, um, hot chocolate. I don't know who has hot chocolate this time of the morning, but let me know what you are having for our coffee date this morning. And I'm so excited to be able to spend some time with you again. Um, I'm sorry about yesterday. We communicated to everyone that uh, yesterday morning we had an opportunity to uh, just minister to some ladies working on the front lines here in our city and we've received permission. Uh, we're just waiting for some more letters, but um, that's a project that we will probably continuously um, see how we can support them once a week just by bringing a word of encouragement. And um, I'll share a little bit more about some of our um, outreach projects that we are so, so excited to be a part of. Um, but I'll wait for a few more people to join us. Mora Elise Valfus Boy is tuned in. Man, we're going to have to keep this thing going somehow after lockdown, hey? Because um, if we go back to uh, in-person services, then we won't have our Valfus Bay community with us every Sunday. Um, which, by the way, I re I've received um, great feedback from some of the ladies who have been watching either live or afterwards, um, asking me for, hey, can we do some more Bible study? Can we do, um, you know, is this something that we can continue? So if you also feel like that, if you... Um, if you would love to do some more Bible study, um, whether it's online or through a, a Zoom phone call and we can then at least see each other's faces or, you know, whatever it is, um, let me know. Send me a little message. Um, it's so nice to receive everyone's feedback. Um, and we'll see, you know, even post lockdown, we can still continue. We can still do things. Um, we still have internet. And so if, if you have a need or if you're interested in that type of thing, then let me know. Um, tell me what type of topics you're interested in. What would you love to talk about? I mean, this is for us as girls um, and as women, really a platform that we can talk about anything. Uh, we can talk about how to equip each other. Um, I have a personal um, a conviction to really bring the word of truth. Um, and so I love the idea of the Bible studies, but I would love to hear your feedback. And I know there's some of you that have, um, send me messages and I haven't I've been able to respond. So I'm going to take some time this afternoon. Saturdays is also now these days are days where we prepare all of our uh, video content for our church services. And um, so Johannes and I are normally quite busy on, on Saturdays working on that, preparing our service and just getting our hearts ready um, for what the Lord wants to do, even through technology. Amen. Um, awesome. Wolfus boy. Elmeri. Yes. Finland. This is awesome. Um, so um, I just wanted to give you some quick feedback. So we've posted on our social media channels as well uh, over the last uh, day or two. Um, we've had an incredible week, um, you know, just reaching out to those in our city. And we've uh, we've linked up with the Vintage Life Change Center, who um, they are an NGO um, established by a local um, in her church here. And they've done incredible work in the community over the years. I've had the privilege of working with them before through another organization um, and they they are like a distribution hub and they um, collect food and then various um, recipients, beneficiaries, people from all sorts of, I think it's over a hundred um, different NGO organization, old age homes, children's homes, they come and they receive and collect food on a weekly basis from, from the Life Change Center. And so you know, as a church, we at this moment, we, we don't have an opportunity to go into the community ourselves during the lockdown time. But we thought even if we can do something little to help one family, then we know that that will be a blessing. And so we've worked with them. We've um, through all of your donations and food distributions, we were able to uh, donate some food this week, Thursday. And uh, on our news group, WhatsApp news group, we shared some photos yesterday of some of the families who received some of these food parcels. Um, but the need is so great, guys. There's so many people who, um, you know, they've lost their entire income. I know a lot of us have lost partial income. Um, and so it's really a tough season for, I think, everyone at this stage. Um, but if there's anything that you can contribute, if there's anything, if you can say, hey, I've got $50, 
um, or I've got one tin of extra canned food, then that will help. We can't do everything, but we can do something. And so I want to encourage you as women, let's see how we can be the first responders in whatever capacity you have. We don't all have the same resource or capacity or time, um, but every little bit that we give, um, I know that God's uh, God's kingdom works on the principle of multiplication as well. So just like Jesus blessed um, the fish and the bread, he can bless whatever we bring um, and it can multiply. And so we can feed so many people. And so you'll see on our Facebook page, you can go and have a look. We've got the food parcels. So either you can pack a food parcel at home or you can donate $250, which um, Johannes and I bought a couple of items and we worked out this is kind of a basic food parcel um, that can help a family in need. Things like maize meal, flour, you know, oil, uh, rice, uh, tinned food, tea, sugar. Um, I think there was something else in there. There's a couple of things in there, um, you know, just to give someone one family a basic food parcel. And then we have another uh, little project uh, which we are starting next week. Every Wednesday morning, we have an opportunity to minister a very short word and prayer just to encourage their hearts and lift their spirits in the season and remind them that Jesus is with them and his Holy Spirit is empowering them, some frontline workers. But we also want to bless them with a small breakfast snack. So if you can either help by making sandwiches at home every Tuesday and we can collect um, or you want to donate, you know, anything up to $50 towards um, some bread and some cheese and tomato and whatever we, we can add to them, then please let us know. It would be really great um, if we can see how we can just bless them in this season. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, I'm excited for this morning again. This is our last one for this week. We thought we would just give it a go um, and see what works for people. Um, and so this week, I think it was difficult for a lot of the mums who started e-learning um, I pray that has gone well for you. Let us know how that went and uh, how we can pray for you in the weeks coming um, coming ahead. But so uh, we thought we would do nine o'clock in the morning with everyday devotions. Um, we'll see next week. Um, let me know. You know, we, we are quite flexible. We are kind of seeing what works for everybody. Um, so I'd love to hear your feedback on that, on how we can go forward just on our sisterhood devotions and just how we connect with one another and share the word and encourage each other um, in the season. So, you know, for those of you who have been here from Monday last week, we uh, said that we are going to talk about inspirational women in the Bible who either have gone through crisis or who lived incredible lives of faith. And even though we don't know their names, they are recorded in the Bible. What they did are recorded in the word and um, just Jesus' heart for his women, how Jesus responded to them, how Jesus broke all these religious barriers and, and went over all of these religious mindsets and traditions to explain and to show how his gospel is truly for everyone, how his gospel um, has no racial barriers, it has no um, national barriers, um, it's for every single person, including women, who in that time were really rated as second-class citizens. They had no rights. Um, they almost had no uh, voice in, in many instances. And so you can go and have a look at those. They're still on our social media channels on Facebook. We spoke about Mary Magdalene, um, who really had a divine encounter with the Lord, being set free from demonic oppression and um, and then she became the first woman and the first person that Jesus revealed himself after it, the resurrection. Um, and so just an incredible inspirational story there. And then Mary of Bethany, we spoke about how she anointed Jesus and just the incredible devotion and worship of her act. Um, and then we spoke on Thursday about the woman at the well um, and that incredible way that she testified and an entire village came to know Jesus um, and how she led them to him and led them into his word. Um, and then, you know, all of the disciples then followed with the ministry in Samaria where a lot of the Holy Spirit just broke open um, and how that was um, a central key in how the gospel spread among the Gentiles in the area of Samaria. Um, you can read further of that in Acts. And so this morning I wanted to talk about someone else. And so I've really been digging into the Bible. There are lots of incredible women. There's all the other Marys we can talk about. But I really felt like I think this was a this was a, an especially tough week for a lot of us in the lockdown. Um, I've heard of a lot of people who this week found out that their salaries have also been cut. 
Um, we see in South Africa that lockdown is now going into stage four, um, but it's only certain people that can go back to work. There's still a lot of people um, who are not receiving income. Um, schools are still not going back. It's trying to figure out e-learning. Um, how do we cope? How do I work from home and help my children? Um, there's all these different elements. And so I just really felt that the Holy Spirit wanted to encourage our faith this morning. Amen. Just talk about um, and encourage our hearts that we need faith in this season more than ever. And faith is just simply believing God's word, standing on his word, no matter what we see in the natural, no matter, no matter what the news uh, forecasts or what they predict. You know, there's so many people out there who are giving predictions and, you know, they look at statistics and they look at trends and, you know, that's great. But we we need to look at the Lord. We need to be in his word. We need to listen to the prophetic voices, what they are saying. We need to hear from the Lord ourselves in this season. Most importantly, ladies, we need to be in the word, fine tuning our spiritual ears and listening to what the spirit is saying to us in our situation. And so this morning, I want to focus on the Canaanite woman, um, which if we read her story, you can read that in Matthew 15, verse 21 to 28. And then the same account is also in Mark 7, verse 24 to 30. And I'll include that again in our comments. Matthew 15, 28, uh, 21 to 28, and Mark 7, 24 to 30. And I love the title um, when I read in, in my study Bible, the title here is The Faith of the Canaanite woman, the faith of this woman. And I always find it interesting that some of these women, we didn't even know their names, but what is highlighted in the word is their faith, their faith. And I don't know about you, but I want to be a woman that if I'm not here, if I'm upgraded to eternity, then I want to be remembered for my faith and for my obedience and for faithfulness. Those are my three, my three keys that I want to be remembered for. And um, let's maybe read the story and then I'll go through a little bit and what I believe we can learn from her. Okay. Have you got your coffee? First things first. Ay, hallelujah. Okay. So I'm going to read from Matthew 15 verse 21. And Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon, but he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, send her away. She's crying out after, after us. And Jesus answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came back and knelt before him. She was on her knees and she said, Lord, help me. And he answered, it is not right to take the children's bread and to throw it to the dogs. And she said, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs uh, that fall from their master's table. And then Jesus answered her, O oh, woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly, instantly. And so this was a very peculiar passage for me when I first read it. And for, for a long time, I just really didn't understand it. Um, I just want to read the bit in Mark 7 as well. Uh, let's read that as well. And it says, and from there he arose, verse 24, Mark 7, 24. From there he arose and he went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And he entered a house and did not want anyone to know, yet he could not be hidden. But immediately a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell down at his feet. Now, this woman was a Gentile, a Syrophoenician by birth. No idea if I pronounced that correctly. And she begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And he said to her, let the children be fed, be fed first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And he said to her, for this statement, you may go your way. The demon has left your daughter and she went home and found the child lying in bed and the demon was gone. Okay, so 
let's take a look at this scripture. Remember we said last week, when we try and study the Bible, let's look at every element. Um, and maybe when we get an opportunity to do it a little bit more um, on Bible study itself, I can maybe share a method that I learned from our Bible school at Levenevoort Derbanville in Cape Town about how they approach the Bible when, when we go for study. So not just reading, it's great to read the Bible, but we need to study the, the Bible to actually get down to the truth and to, to get to revelation. And, um, and we definitely need the Holy Spirit's guidance in that. Amen. So I find it interesting. It says here that he went there and he withdrew to a Gentile district. Now, this um, Tyre and Sidon communi uh, community or area, when you look at the maps um, in, in a study Bible, for example, um, these were Gentile cities in Phoenicia. They were often an object of condemnation by Old Testament prophets because these people, these Gentile communities, did a lot of Baal worship and they worshipped all sorts of things outside of, of the God of Israel. And so we know that, you know, in Jesus' ministry, he was first called to pronounce the kingdom of God to the people of Israel, okay, to the Israelites. But we see in a lot of areas and stories in the gospel like this one, where he withdrew to certain Gentile communities and he started to reveal to some of the Gentiles, which was actually a gospel uh, or a ministry for his disciples. He sent them out to go to Samaria and all ends of the earth, remember? And so this is the context of what Jesus is speaking about here. Okay, I actually believe that the reason he withdrew to this area was specifically to minister to some of the Gentile people, because why else would he go to a community where Gentiles are at, except to also withdraw? Because there were there were certain times in Jesus's ministry where he would reveal parts of himself, parts of his message, parts of why he came, and so he went to the people of Israel first to tell them about and to reveal God's kingdom. But this story actually foreshadows the future ministry of the disciples to the Gentile people. So Gentiles, we know, were people who were not Jewish of descent, like Jesus. All right. So, so he went to this town. And um, like we saw with the woman on the well, you know, Jesus knew exactly. He was so calculated. He had discernment. He was always on mission. His food was just to do the will of the Father. And so he knew exactly. Jesus didn't waste any time with any, you know, silly activities that wasted his time that had no eternal value. Jesus was always on mission, and I believe he knew exactly where he was going, who he was going to encounter, um, because he was just always led by the Spirit in his ministry, okay? We saw that in, um, in Matthew when he came out of the wilderness after he was tested for 40 days. It said he came out in the power of the Holy Spirit, and so he was always led by the Spirit, which in its sense is already our first big lesson, amen? And so scholars say that Jesus was already known in this area. So this woman must have heard from him already because we know that the people from that community, um, they had, you know, they had learned, where was it that I actually read as well? Some scholars say that, um, you know, the fact that she called him Lord was often an expression of, even if you didn't know that Jesus was the Messiah, it was an expression of respect. But I believe she actually had heard about Jesus because we read in Mark, there's a little clue that said he went to this region, he entered a house, he didn't want anyone to know, but he couldn't be hidden. And it also said that this woman had heard of him and then she came and fell down at his feet. You know, so the, the story of Jesus, the ripple effect of him, um, you know, healing people, doing signs, wonders, and miracles had already spread across so many villages that I believe it actually reached some of these Gentile villages. So something inside of her in terms of her faith was already activated. She had heard a testimony. She had heard her story. And apparently there was a, a, a Baal temple. I don't actually know if it was a Baal temple, but there was a God of healing whose temple was only four kilometers away from this region. And she, a lot of the locals would go there if they needed healing or deliverance, which was actually obviously demonic, uh, demonically infused. But she had heard of Jesus. And so something of her faith was activated that, that made her go into this house, okay, where probably a lot of Jewish folks were with Jesus. And as a Gentile woman, 
you know, it must have taken a lot of courage, a lot of faith for her to go and then say and admit, you know, her daughter was oppressed by an evil spirit. Um, this was not something that you shouted from the rooftops. Okay, you, she was probably already ostracized even in her own community, like we saw with the woman at the well and so many of the other women that Jesus met in the Gospels. And so I think it's incredible that she came. Something of her faith must have been already activated to come and ask Jesus, can you please heal my daughter? And so in verse 24 in Matthew, in the Matthew 15 account, Jesus answered, I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now I thought, Jesus, why would you say that if you came all the way to this town, which clearly was a Gentile town? But this just reminds us that, you know, Jesus had a mission first with the, with the people of Israel. But I actually um, had a chat with Johannes and we were discussing this last night and I wanted to get his thoughts on it as well. And we believe they were obviously Jews with him. Jews in his setting, in his companionship, that still from their history, um, you know, the Jews didn't mix with the Gentiles. The Jews often called Gentiles dogs. This was the terminology that they would often call them. Um, and dogs in, in those Palestinian days were actually scavengers. They were wild dogs, um, just wild. They were just looking for scraps and, you know, it's actually a filthy animal. It wasn't like our little cute pet dogs in our homes. Um, and so it was actually a very derogatory term. Um, and I believe Jesus was saying all these things to actually just um, break down those kind of racial barriers. Those, you know, we are the Jews. He only, only came for us. Jesus was slowly starting to introduce that his kingdom and his message is for anyone whosoever believes. And I believe he was also testing this woman's faith because clearly she had known because she also used terms like um, son of David, which means that, you know, they had some study, they had some some background of, um, you know, of the first books of the Pentateuch of the Bible. So she had some kind of an understanding, um, but maybe her revelation was something, the revelation that she had of Jesus as the healer was something that Jesus wanted to give her. And wanted to explain and so you know we see the disciples getting annoyed because you know it's a gentile she's nagging um they probably feel like they've got more important ministry for jesus to attend to um, but jesus is on mission for this gentile woman and so jesus has another plan in verse 25 this woman insisted okay she came and knelt before him saying lord please help me Okay, so she didn't take Jesus's first answer or comment as something to just say no. She persisted, just like the persistent widow, and the, the judge even eventually gave in because she was just so persistent. And sometimes I feel, I don't know about you, but in our faith, we cannot be persistent at all. We think if we pray one prayer and it doesn't get answered immediately that Jesus is not interested or God didn't hear us or you know, we don't have enough faith. But all throughout the New Testament, all throughout even Old Testament, Scripture says that we need to be persistent. The Bible says we need to keep on asking, keep on praying, pray without ceasing. And so I really believe, um, girls, in this season, we should be persistent. Press in. Go deeper into your faith. Go deeper into the Word of God. Don't just settle for one prayer and think, you know, that's it, you know. Um, no, we need to be digging into scripture. Press in. Show the Lord you've got faith. The, the word says that God's eyes are roaming the entire earth to look for people with faith, to look for people who are righteous. And I believe that is us. That is, that is who we are as a church. We are going to continue trusting God. It doesn't matter what the media says. It doesn't matter whether we all get laid off and none of us have jobs. We are going to be people of faith. Trusting our God, trusting in a kingdom that is not of this world. Amen. Okay. Let me not get ahead of myself because I'm getting excited. The more time I spend in the word, the more energized I get. Okay, but let's focus. Let's go back. So Jesus had another plan. Her heart posture was one of persistence. And she was like, Jesus, I need you to help me. I know your mission is for, for the, the Israelites, for the people of Israel. But she said to him here in verse... Um, 27, yes, Lord, 
I know and I recognize. But yet even the dogs, Gentiles, can eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Okay. So now, um, you know, what is profound to me is that remember Jesus talked in a lot of symbolism sometimes. He spoke in parables. Um, and I believe he was always testing people. He was always seeing who's listening, who's tuned in in the spirit, who's looking at their natural circumstances, who's looking at the spiritual kingdom of God, which is above this world, above the natural, above what we see and perceive in the natural, who's tuned in in the spirit. And, you know, dogs, as we said, um, refer to the Gentiles, because that's a derogatory term that the Jews often use to speak of Gentile people. Um, dogs, we see that the Greek word that uh, Jesus actually used there for dogs was kynarion. Kynarion, no idea if I'm pronouncing it right, but that refers to a little dog. It's almost like a more affectionate terminology for dog, like a house pet. I imagine it um, a klein cute vorschwinki. Okay, so not a wild, filthy animal like, like the Jews would use that term. Um, so that talks about the dogs, talks about the Gentile people. Even the dogs, the Gentile people can pick up the crumbs of the bread that falls from the master's table. What was the bread that he referred to? The bread was Jesus, the message of Jesus. Jesus often refers to himself or to himself as the bread of life. Um, and we can, we can, see that that speaks about his message amen and so then there was also the children which speaks of the jewish people okay and at first i was very offended when i read this i thought jesus that sounds quite rude you know clearly this woman has a need um she's coming to jesus at her last end there's no one else that can help her all the the dead gods of her village can't help her so she's coming to the one that she's heard stories of and she's putting her faith out there. She's putting her courage out there in front of all these Jewish people to come and say, Jesus, please help me. And I thought, I didn't understand the symbolism in which Jesus spoke about. And she said, Lord, even the dogs, even the Gentile people can pick up the crumbs of your message, can pick up who you are. Surely you will be for everyone, for every nation, every tribe and every tongue, and not just your Jewish children. And so Jesus comes and he says, woman, your great is your faith it will be done to you because you understood in the spirit you persisted in your faith okay you didn't let the first comment stop you but you still devoted yourself you still humbled yourself you still persisted in your faith and that activated jesus's healing ministry and immediately he delivered and healed her daughter he she wasn't even in the room she wasn't even present it said in mark 7 that the woman went home uh where is it verse yeah mark 7 in verse 30 and she went home and found the child lying in bed and the demon was gone okay so i you but i i am just ready to see jesus operate and to see us as the church operate in that place in that realm of faith and i really believe that that we are going into a new season where um we, we, we can't just read about signs, wonders, and miracles. We can't just read about, um, you know, people being set free from, from darkness and oppression and chains. Um, this is, if more than ever, you know, Jesus is coming back. He's, he's waiting for his bride to arise and to move in a realm of faith and to release healing like no one's business, like it was in the Bible. I don't believe this was just for biblical times. Jesus said, I've commissioned you. I've sent you out into the world. Go in the authority that I give to you. So I really want to, girls, honestly, I, I don't see this sisterhood community as just a place where we exchange recipes. No, we are going to be equipped and we are going to trust the Holy Spirit to empower us and to raise us up, to go out, raise the dead, um, heal the sick, deliver those, whether we are in lockdown or not. Jesus was here in a house and this girl was delivered from a demon in another house maybe very far from them in the village. And so lockdown is not going to stop the gospel from going forward. Lockdown is not going to stop Jesus from healing people, from delivering people. And so I actually pray that at the sound of my voice, even as we are, you know, preaching the gospel online, as every church is going to be preaching the gospel tomorrow morning, you know, 
um, and tomorrow evening and right throughout the day that God's word would send forth healing and people will be healed. But we need to be people of faith. You know, it says that that Jesus's healing was activated by the faith of that woman. And I honestly believe that faith is a key to heaven's economy. Faith is the key that will release a lot of the things. People are often asking, well, why didn't Jesus heal? Why isn't Jesus coming through to me? Well, you know, how are you releasing your faith? I'm not saying always that a lack of faith means that God doesn't move. I don't believe that's accurate theology. But my point, what I want to focus on this morning is, how are we releasing our faith to draw an open heaven over us? To draw an open heaven over our finances, over our health, over our families, over our marriages. We need to look at these women who demonstrated their faith and men. They were incredible men of faith in the word. Um, and Jesus was drawn to her persistence. He was drawn to her faith. And with that, he broke all of those barriers from the Jewish people who were probably in the room with him. And he announced that the gospel was also for the Gentiles. The gospel was also for people outside of the Jewish circles, the Jewish people, the Jewish children of Israel. Amen. Faith opens heaven. Faith brings a release in the spiritual realm. Hebrews 11 verse 1 said, Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Owens Ons kan nie in a plek wees waar nie ek sal het glo as ek het sien nie. Dit is nie hoe geloof werk nie. That is not how it works in the upside down kingdom. We need to believe before we see it manifest in the natural. That is, that is faith. We need to believe in things before we see them. Jesus said to Thomas, um, when Thomas said, I don't believe, I'm doubting. You know, Jesus met him in his point of unbelief. He met him in his point of doubt rather, sorry. And he said, feel my fingers. But then Jesus said to him, blessed are those who haven't seen, but yet they believe. Honestly, I, oh, I feel the Holy Spirit on this. This is really a season for our faith to be activated again. And faith, the Bible says, comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You know, sit after Netflix, Owens, and, and let's spend more time in the word. Let's act, if you feel like you're struggling in your faith, Put off Netflix, okay? That's not going to help you in building your faith. And get into the Word. Dig into the Scripture. You know, this week as I was just preparing for the devotions, it has, I feel like in my heart, faith has exploded. I feel like there's that Scripture in the, you know, in the accounts of the resurrection of where the two, the two disciples were walking back from the tomb, uh, the tomb and um, you know, Jesus showed up in the road and they didn't recognize him. And, and the Bible says that they something burned on the inside of them. Did our hearts not burn on the inside of us when we spoke to him? And that's how I feel when I spend just 10 minutes in the word. Something starts burning on the inside of my heart. And I believe that's an activation by the Holy Spirit of faith. When we feed on, like Jesus said, on his bread, on his body, on the word of God. And um, 11, Hebrews 11 verse 6 says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. It's impossible. And, you know, it sounds like harsh words, but I believe it's possible for all of us to have an increased measure of faith in this season. You know, if we look at all of these women, and I'm thinking of even the woman in the Old Testament, she's been on my heart all week as, as we've been uh, working with these NGOs and we see people with no money, no food. These people can't even access grants because some of them don't even have ID documents. And the need is so huge, guys. The need is so huge. And and I think of myself, to myself, of that woman who, you know, Elijah came to her house and he said to her, feed me. And he was preparing already to bless her with a miracle. Um, and all she had was just a little bit. Just a little bit. And Elijah said to her, gather without seeing, gather all the jars. Okay. I didn't even look at this scripture, but I'm just remembering that now. And he said to her, gather all the jars and start pouring in the little oil that you have. And when she did the little bit that she had, the crumb that she had, the drop that she had of her own resources, it started flowing. It activated something in the supernatural. The principle of multiplication came just like Jesus with the bread and the loaves, the fish and the loaves, and it multiplied. 
And so I want to encourage you in this season, if you are discouraged and if you are fearful and if you have anxiety because, you know, maybe your husband lost his job, you lost your job uh, with this COVID-19 nightmare or your salary has been cut and you're worried and you're like, Lord, how am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to get through all my financial commitments? Then I want to encourage your heart this morning. I want to fill you with faith and I want to speak hope into your life that Jesus can multiply. And so I pray that that our eyes and ears will be open and let, let's listen. Ask the Lord, Lord, what do I need to do in this season? What are you expecting of me? Maybe I need to sow five rand, five Namibian dollars. Maybe I need to give food to someone I see in, in pick and pie when I do my essential shopping. Um, maybe I need to pray for someone. Maybe I need to sow a seed of prayer. Maybe I need to sow some of my time. You know, maybe I can make five sandwiches. Um, you know, whatever it is, it looks different to all of us. Um, but I pray that we will see, Lord, how do we see you in this season come through for us in the miraculous? Many of these people only saw the miracles of God when they were at their end, when they had no other backup, when they weren't able to look after themselves. You know, we've seen a lot when we go out in these um, villages and when we go out for outreaches. And I've seen, I've worked with many missionaries over over Africa, different countries, Mozambique, Zambia, um, Zimbabwe, um, South Africa, different communities, the Eastern Cape. And I see how God's miracles come through. They see the stories we read about in the Bible. They see it because they were always in a place where they have no other means. They have no other way of taking care of themselves, of being their own provider, being their own supplier. Oftentimes we need to get to the end of ourselves so we can see God do the miraculous. We need to be at the Red Sea so we can see him cross. We need to get to the impossible so we can see the possible happen. So we can see God come and perform his miracle. Amen. So I pray that that has blessed you this morning. And I want to pray for you. I want to pray that in this season that, that the Holy Spirit will infuse a new spirit of faith in you that that burning would arise in your heart and that you will trust the Lord to do the impossible in your life, to do the impossible in our city. And um, man, to see heaven come down, I'm just, yo, I'm on the faith train this morning. And, um, and I want to end with this thought. Um, yes, I forgot about this. This is good. There's, um, there's this other aspect of our faith that I believe our faith will be tested. And I think for some of us, we're in this place in the season where our faith is being tested. You know, God's not the author of destruction, but he will use these things, as we said before, for the good of those who love him. And oftentimes our faith will be tested. Why? Um, there's three scriptures I want to read to you and you can write them down. In the Old Testament, Zechariah 13 verse 9, it says the following. And I will put this third into the fire and I will refine them as one refined silver and I will taste them as gold is tasted and they will call upon my name and I will answer them and I will say they are my people and they will say the Lord is my God. Sometimes God will taste our faith like this woman's faith, the Canaanite woman's faith was tested. I believe Jesus was already ready. He probably already healed her daughter. She wasn't even there, but he needed to taste her heart. You needed to test her faith. Listen to what it says in James 1, verse 2 to 4, New Testament. Count it all joy, my brothers. Now, when you go through a season of testing of your faith, but listen to this. Count it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect. Why? So that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Okay, I believe many of us are going to go through our small church. Okay, we thought it took faith to start a church. Now it's going to take even more faith for us to see this church grow and to be sustained. And I believe God's going to explode our church and the work that we get to do and the assignment he's called us for in this city and the nation of Namibia like never before. Um, amen. And God is going to test our faith. The testing of our faith produces steadfastness and so that it can have its full effect so we may be perfect, complete, lacking in nothing. This is good. 1 Peter 1 verse 6 to 7. 
1 Peter 1, verse 6 to 7. This is my last scripture. And then we're on 40 minutes already. Um, yes, it says here, in this, okay, in this suffering, in your suffering, rejoice. Though now for a little while, if necessary, you may have been grieved by various trials. Okay, week five of lockdown. Suffering for a little while. We may be grieved by various trials. Verse 7, why? So that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay, so our faith, more precious than gold, will be tested so that it will lead and result in praise and glory and honor to the revelation of Jesus Christ. And the Lord spoke this scripture to me in a season where I really had to bury some things, where I had to bury some promises from the Lord. It had to die underground and I had to trust the Lord. I had to walk away from certain words and promises because the Lord said to me, do you trust me? And I believe it was a season where, where he tested my faith and he gave me this promise. There was another translation that said, though you have suffered for a little while, and some of you feel this morning that you are suffering for a while. But I want to encourage you that it's just going to be for a while. It won't be forever. The suffering will come to an end. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Jesus is testing our faith in this season. But it will produce like gold. You know, when gold is refined, when gold goes through the fire of purification, um, all the impurities rise to the surface. And all that is left is the pure beautiful refined gold and so i pray in this season that the lord will use this fire of suffering and use what we are going through to bring the impurities to the surface to remove those things in our hearts that shouldn't be there the doubt the fear the discouragement um you know attitudes of our hearts offense hurt whatever it is whatever it is that's stopping us from from walking forward in that incredible faith that we can have so that our faith will be tested and that we will be um, found steadfast with a pure faith. So God can entrust us with this mission of his kingdom in this nation. In Jesus name. Amen. Let me end off and I'm going to pray for you this morning. And so I want you where you are sitting. If you have an, a, a quiet little place somewhere, just focus your heart on the Holy Spirit. Close your eyes and just see Jesus and the Holy Spirit come and pour liquid faith into your heart. Just see him minister to you right now. And Lord, I thank you this morning for the privilege and the honor to share your word with our sisters, um, whether they're in Namibia or Finland or South Africa or wherever they are watching from, Lord, live or pre-recording. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit right now would touch them. Lord, will touch their hearts wherever they are at. Lord, and I want to pray for my sister who may be sitting there. And Lord, and she's very discouraged this morning. Before she listened to this broadcast, she actually had so much fear and doubt. And just wondering how they're going to get through this season, Lord. How, how are they going to pay their bills? How are they going to make do, Lord? How are they going to survive this season? How is her business going to survive? Maybe her business is still closed. Uh, maybe her husband has lost his job, Lord. Whatever their situation, you know. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would just touch them right now where they are at. Lord, that you would fill them, pour out to them a new measure of faith this morning. Fill them with your presence. Lord, and I just speak your peace over every anxious heart this morning. Your peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, touch your girls this morning. May your presence be so tangible and so real to them, Lord. Fill them with faith. Remind them of your goodness. Remind them of your word of promise. Remind them, Lord, that even though our suffering may endure for a little while, once our faith is tested, we will be found steadfast, pure faith. And that we will count it as pure joy, Lord, in this season. That you are at work, whether we see it or not. Lord, and I pray that our hearts would start to burn, Lord, with faith in you, with faith in your word. And I pray, Lord, that you will open up our spiritual eyes and ears, that we may see you, that we may see what you are doing in the spiritual realm, that we may see how busy you are, Lord, that we may see your angels at work bringing solutions. 
Lord, but that we will be found steadfast and persistent in our faith. Lord, I pray that we will have endurance in this season, that we will continuously seek you, that we will be persistent in our prayers as a sisterhood, as a woman, Lord, that we will continue to press in in prayer, that we will pray for our husbands, that we will pray for our children, that we will pray for our leaders, we will pray for our schools, our teachers, our governments, um, our local and global leaders, we will pray for our churches, we will pray for everyone, Lord, that needs your wisdom, that needs your guidance in the season like never before. Lord, and we will press forth for your healing power to manifest. Lord, we will press forth to operate in the gifts of the Spirit that you have given us so that we can be your hands and feet in this earth. Lord, and I pray for your radical provision into every home, into every NGO, into every business. We thank you, Lord, that no weapon formed against us will prosper. But Jesus, that you will recover and you will restore everything that has been lost by the locusts, by that which have stolen from us in this season. Lord, I pray that you will multiply that which we can give, whether it's our resource, our time, uh, whatever it is we can contribute. I pray that your Holy Spirit would bless and multiply, Lord. And I pray that as a church community, Lord, and as women, um, who you've given us this ability, Lord. You've given us empathy. You've given us compassion. You've given us the ability to multitask like it's no one's business. Help us, Lord, to serve our families and serve our communities in this season. Lord, help us to feed the hungry and to clothe the poor. Let us not just look at the needs around us and turn a blind eye, but help us to be your hands and feet in this season. Lord, give us ways, give us strategies, give us resource, Lord. Help us to do what you have called us to do so that a broken world out there can know about your love and can know about the hope that is found in Jesus Christ. No government, no world organization, no one can give us the answer in this season but you. Jesus, you are the answer and we thank you. And I bless every sister watching and I bless her heart and I thank you that you will strengthen her and you will fill her with courage and you would fill her with hope in this season. In Jesus' name. And I'm going to say, Amen. Amen. Yes, I can leave myself a scripture. Yelle, Jesus is good. And he is for you. And he loves you. And so remember to send me a message. Let me know um, how can we take this forward. How can we continue to minister to you as women. Um, and don't forget, we've got our church service tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m. Sunday, the 26th of April. Um, Johannes is bringing the word and I'm excited because God is is really speaking to him in this season and so I know that he's going to bring something that will really speak into your heart and into your family and so tune in um, on lwnamibia.online.church it's on our Facebook page if I got it wrong just go and check there and um, if you want to get involved in any of our outreach projects just let me know send us a message send us a whatsapp and um, we love you Thank you for your commitment. Thank you to our, uh, for your heart. Thank you for praying for us. We know that you are praying for us as well, and we're praying for you. And um, have a blessed weekend. Um, enjoy the sunshine in Vintuk if you are here. And um, yeah, we'll chat to you soon. See you tomorrow. God bless.